Okay, here, hold on. Come here. I'm gonna take you out. Get your shoes on, jackets. There's a cookie shop downstairs. There's a cookie shop downstairs? Squad I into Squad K. The tenants say there's a cookie shop downstairs, so... New York City fire in the train, aggressive interior attack. Get in the building, push the fire out of the building, rather than go outside the building and push the fire in. So we go in, and we aggressively attack the fire and push it, push it out and put it out. We got cell fire. Yeah, well, we got fire over our heads here. Yeah. Well, we got fire this way. We need a line down here. Let's go see all down. Squad eyes, squad K. We were in the basement, K. We knocked down the main body of fire. Hey, come on, Norton. Norton, what are you doing down there? We got the body of fire knocked down. It's just charged like a mother. We need ventilation. Hey, Norton. Yeah, you were in the basement, found a fire in the cellar? Yeah, well, we went up, we went up the stairs, and it was just smoke. And I, did you hear me say it's in the cellar? I was telling everyone it was in the cellar. It was in the cellar. That's where I found it. Fire itself is a force to reckon with. You have to respect it, man. It'll take you in two seconds. Has no conscience. Gun. I've always been in the ghetto for 23 years, and uh, I never worked in a, a well-to-do neighborhood. Where are you? You got everybody? There's a lot of fire activity in Brooklyn. As we say, it's the borough of fire. It's a good place for young guys to come because you learn how to be a fireman here a little quicker than anywhere else. I really don't like to call it a ghetto firehouse because it's, uh, generally the neighborhood is um, it's just a poor neighborhood. For the most part, I've been here uh, in 79, and this neighborhood, specifically Bushwick, is the second poorest in the city. Consequently, there's a lot of fires. And there's a lot more situations that you have to deal with. It's a little more busy than a lot of other places. And it's a little more exciting. And everybody seems to want to be in a place like this or a place in a neighborhood like this. That bell goes off, you get on the rig, you hear that radio code 1075. You get some adrenaline pumping, you, you got 100 pounds of equipment on you, and you just you're gonna run through walls and jump from building to building, from fire escape to fire escape. The unknown is exciting. Every fire is different, every fire is unique, you know. It starts in the basement, it could start in the cockle, it could start anywhere. You need all your senses at a fire. You need to hear it, you need to feel it, you need to see it, you need to smell it. Actually, fire has life and it actually speaks, at least to me it does, and you want to fight it. So you're constantly fighting the devil when you're in a fire. If you really listen to a fire, it, it has a sound and it sounds devilish. And it's starting to boil. And and it sounds like it's talking to you, and it's, you don't like it. it. It's kind of unnerving, it's kind of hot, it's kind of scary, but you, you know, you know the fire's gonna go out and you gotta get in there and put it out because you might save somebody's life, so you don't stop. supposed to be going in there you know everything in, in human nature tells you don't go in and that doesn't make us <laughs> actually sane people you know well, a lot of firemen are insane good insane but they're insane because you know it don't make a whole lot of sense to do what we do sometimes underneath all the rough exterior and all the rough rough crap that you'll see a lot of there's got to be some caring you got to care for other people you won't get a lot of guys who admit that Got it. Otherwise, why would you do it? Oh. You want to cut that? Actually, I do, if you don't mind. Yeah, you can cut it if you want. Wait. Just cut the breast. See what it looks like inside. Oh yeah, she's not done yet. 
Section C. I don't know, bro. It's close. It's November 28th, Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Guys with younger children get off for the holiday. All right. Like Tommy's our senior guy. He stepped up to work so somebody else that has younger children can have the day off. I'm sure uh, some of the guys wanted to be home with their families. I know I did, but again, luck of the draw and how the chart falls. The guys that are new to the company, they, you know, guy that's got time in the house, will, they'll step up to work for them, you know, just uh, out of respect for the senior man, you know. But um, yeah, that's what's happening tonight, I believe. There's a couple of guys working for a couple other guys. And that can go under the bunk for now, and we'll set it up in the office window later. Captain Metcalf's playing father. <laughs> Let me tell you, because with the crew we got tonight, it's like a bunch of kids he's got with him. Putting out the finest silverware we have with the nice napkins, doilies. Paul, can you do me a favor? What? That first pie that's in the oven, can you pull it out? The zucchini pie? Just kind of barking out of one. I'm like a little bit of a Today? Today you like little Mussolini? How about every day? Just check the thing for me. Please. I want this. Put it on the stove. Are you putting whipped cream on this too? No, that's for dinner. This is going to be for the dog. Yeah, I don't want to. Guys coming in early, bro. Do the right thing. I wanted to relieve the uh, senior man. So I get Tommy Burke. 24 year man fireman, so I wanted to get him home. So, you know. Plus, I miss these guys. They're like a toothache. Did you bring the gravy boat? No, I didn't bring the gravy boat. You didn't bring the gravy boat, huh? This is a riding list. Every, every day we come in, we have to fill out a riding list. It, it tells you what's your position. Today is the, the, the date, 928. Well, it's 1128, I think. Today's the day tour. And the officer is Lieutenant Makla. I'm the chauffeur. A seated chauffeur is Norton. That's my nickname, as in honeymooners. You're going to the moon, Alice. Just go to any fire department function and say Norton, and they'll know who you're talking about. In any borough, in any, any fire department function, Norton is Norton. This is a Halligan tool right here. And this is the most important tool in the truck. This forces doors, pulls ceilings, takes windows. You break windows with it. You can force doors with it. Put it in and use it as a crowbar. You can, you know, use a can opener method. Um, First, Norton is good. He's good at what he does. And second, because he's got he's got a unique personality. He likes to have fun when he works. I mean, when the, when the bell rings and and it's blowing out a couple of windows, he's not funny then. He's a, he's a, one of the best firemen I've ever worked with. The can has about three gallons of water. You press this handle and it comes out. So every position is key. The roofman gets his gets the roof, uh, the forcible entry team forces the door, finds the fire, the engine's stretching the line, the guys behind them are ch chasing the kinks, hooking up, getting water, and uh, it's teamwork. And if, it, if everyone does their job, usually the job goes like clockwork. Oh, 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 God, I'm not going to have an appetite. Come on, bro. I'm not going to have an appetite. What's so wrong with you, bro? You are definitely, there's definitely something wrong with you. Pork chop, open this door. Get a key. Well, get the key and open the door. We have the same training as rescue, but the rescue does not have the hazmat rig. That's all the special equipment that nobody else has other than the squad. And this is the stuff that we were specially trained on. And this is what makes us unique. This is a level A hazardous materials entry suit. You need this to enter a hot zone of the hazardous materials unit. This protects you. You put your Scott cylinder on first, so you, you have uh, inhalation protection. Then you're inside the suit, you obviously have protection from absorption. This gives you the maximum level of protection. The squads and the hazmat units are the only ones that carry them. This is the kids' end over no, here. No, you no, sit on that end. The, the, the adults, the adults, the adults are on this end. Chuck, where's some of this stuff? That's carrot pie. It's, it's, trust me, it's I mean, carrot pie. Bro, bro, listen. You busted <laughs> your ass. You have to expand yeah. your mind. Right. Norton's going to say Grace. You want to say Grace? Yeah, Norton's going to say something. Yeah, I mean, we're going to say something. Do we hear this? We're going to say Grace. You stinking animals. Ah. What is this? I don't know. But it's man's own man. Ah. 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 You knew it. You have to know what you're doing. You're not taking it. You knew it. Now the fact you get the baby on the heater. What is it called? Cool. Auto gas. Classic. 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 Absolutely classic. Auto gas is probably too hard. What model is it called? Thanksgiving dinner.
gas leak in the cellar over there. Well, pretty routine. But it just came at the perfect time. You knew when we were going to sit down for Thanksgiving breakfast, uh, Thanksgiving dinner, you knew that that was it. You knew it. Bless the Lord for this, it gives you faith to see you from the band of Christ the Lord. Amen. The Father, the Son, the Spirit, Amen. Happy, hey, Miss Grace. Who said it? I did. Do you want to say it? No, you just throw that in for you, Captain. As usual. As usual. Very good. Really, you did a great job. Oh, now, is that stuff in that funny? This is stuff in Yeah, pick that one. These are called utensils. This is a fork. Put the food on the fork and put it in your mouth. Yes, Captain. You did a stuff. Eat a fork out of your mouth. He's an animal.